sing only believe all things are possible. Heavenly Father, we want to return thanks unto you tonight for your goodness unto us in the land of the living. Before we left here on Sunday, Lord, we committed ourselves into your hands and we ask, Lord, that you give us the opportunity to be gathered together again today to return thanksgiving unto you. And we thank you, Father, for granting these desires unto us. Thank you for your blessings, Lord, since the beginning of the week. We've seen your hand in diverse ways in our lives. Are you put the enemy to shame in our lives? Are you fought our battles for us? Are you won victories on our behalf? Are you kept our feet from falling? Are you provided for our needs? You healed our bodies, Lord Father. And we are grateful unto you, Lord Jesus. And we say, Blessed be your holy name, Father. Lord, we ask tonight, Lord Father, if there be any way, Lord, we've gone wrong against you, against your word, against your will. May you forgive us in the name of Jesus. May your blood that speaks better than the blood of Abel. May you speak pardon on our behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you know the needs, Lord, that have been represented here tonight. You know our desires, you know our petitions. We ask, Lord, Father, that you reach out to each and every one of us. You know, we've sang, Lord, that we know that all things are possible. And we said, Jesus is here. And because you are here, all things are possible. And we know you keep all appointments, Lord. And you know those things that you used to do when you come around. Lord, may you do them for us again tonight. May our joys be full. May our vessels be full and running over. Those who are listening at home, those who will be listening on tapes later, those who are listening, Lord, over the internet, may you bless each and every one in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because you've answered these prayers. May you be the one that will speak to us tonight, Lord. Grant it, Heavenly Father. We ask these things, Lord, with faith and thanksgiving in Jesus Christ, then we are prayed. Amen. God bless you all. You all welcome to church again tonight. I believe we had a wonderful day. God bless you all. Please, there are still seats in front. You can draw, we can come closer. Don't sit at the back. If you are not a nursing mother, you don't have babies that you are taking care of. Come and sit in front. I think the usher is supposed to be giving us seats. Not everybody just sit. In the, see, in the house of God, there is order. And children of God are obedient people. We shouldn't be repeating this and over and the ministers are even tired to be talking about. Pastor self is tired. To remind us to come to the front. But me, I will not be tired though. Except I don't remember. So come to the front. Even young people are sitting at the back. Children, too, some of them have started leaning to sit at the back. May God be our help. Exactly. Watching footsteps. May our life be a right influence to those that are coming behind us. Huh. All right, let's start our Bible for the book of Genesis. <laughs> Genesis chapter 3. Uh, Brother Lee said it looks nicer this way. Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3. We are going to read from verse 14 and 15. And then we will read from the book of um, Genesis again, chapter 22. I trust that the Lord will help us this evening. All right, Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. If you are there, say amen. amen. All right. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou art done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. And upon thy belly shall thou go, 
and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. God was addressing the serpent here directly. All right. And God did not stop there because if he had just spoken to the serpent alone, then his descendants, amen, because we know the serpent has already had a seed. Are we following? He has planted a seed already. We want to continue from where we stopped the other time when we were talking about sowing and reaping. We want to take another side this evening and I trust that the Lord will help us. But, you know, God knows all things. He knows the end from the beginning and He will take care of everybody. Everybody has been taken care of in Genesis. Everybody. His children were taken care of. So also the descendants of the serpent were also taken care of. Now let's read verse 15. It says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, he shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Amen. Let's read Genesis 22. Genesis chapter 22. We'll read from verse 15 to verse 18. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and as now we tell thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. One more scripture before we sit down. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews 6. Uh, we start from, let's start from verse 10. Right, it says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Say to your neighbor, God is not righteous. For which ye have showed towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. We are in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entered into that within the veil. Without the foreign eyes for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. God bless you. Be seated. Amen. May God have his blessings to the reading and hearing of his holy and precious word. Amen. We are once again welcome to church this evening. By the grace of God this evening, I want, to, want us to look at this thought from the prophet and I want to title it the seed of our victory seed seed yes the seed of our victory and we'll be taking our um, what's it called inspiration this evening from the spoken word is the original seed and also from um, that seed shall possess the gate of the enemies amen all right Remember the last time when we were talking about um, sowing and reaping, we mentioned some things about um, we talked about the principles of sowing and reaping. I think we mentioned four principles during that time, and um, I think the first one was that um, everything is every life is influenced 
by sowing and reaping. Whether you believe it or not, whether you agree with it or not, sowing and reaping exist. And everything you do is a seed and there's going to be another time. Alright, that's principle number one. The second one is that um, you reap what you sow. Amen? And the third one is you reap more than what you sow. And the fourth one is you reap later than when you sow. Alright. So, this evening, I want us to look at something here. Now, but Abraham made us to understand that the book of Genesis is the seed chapter. Are we following? And he said, everything that we see on earth today started in Genesis. Rebellion started in Genesis. Alright? Marriage started in Genesis. Amen. Adultery started in Genesis. Anything you can think of, everything started where? In Genesis. Now, when we look at the book of Genesis, we realize that God did some wonderful things for us who are the heirs of the promise, even right in that Genesis. Our victory, amen, the seed of our victory was also done what? Sowed in Genesis. And that is what we want to show to you this evening. Now, we understand also that the word of God cannot fail. You believe that? Say amen. The Bible said, Heaven and I will pass away. It said, But my word shall never pass away unfulfilled. And Brother Abraham also made us to understand that the word of God is a seed. Amen. That when planted on the right kind of ground, it will bring forth its fruits. Are we following friends? Alright. Now, when we go back to that Genesis chapter 3 that we read, and I want us to read it again, he says something here. He said, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. And upon thy belly thou shalt go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And he said, I will put enmity between thy seed and the woman and between sorry, between thy seed and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. Now, I want us to look at the um Meaning, the dictionary meaning of enmity. Now, according to Webster Dictionary, the word enmity means positive or active and typically mutual hatred or ill will. Did you get that? He called it, he said, that hatred could be positive. It could be active, it could be typical, but it is what? It is hatred or ill will. So that is to say, wherever you find the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, you are going to have an active hatred or an active ill will between the two of them. And like we were saying the last time, we said this hatred. Because God does not have hatred in him, this hatred usually starts from the seed of the serpent. Are we following, friends? Amen. If you are following me, say amen. amen. Alright. Now, when you... Brother was speaking in the, in the Psalm of Entombment, and he was talking about the conversation between Jesus and Satan when Jesus Christ went into the domain of Satan. Abraham said, when Satan saw Jesus, he said, oh, finally, you are here. He said, when I got Abel, I thought I got you. When I got Abraham, I thought I got you. When I got Isaiah, I thought I got you. And he mentioned some of the names of the prophets, thinking that each time he got any of God's children, he thought he had got Jesus. But he actually acknowledged that he was mistaken. He said, but now you've come to me by yourself. Thinking that finally he has had victory seemingly over Jesus. Remember at that time, the body called Jesus was dead. Lying in the grave. But 
The interesting thing is, the body might be dead, but the person living in that body was still active. Not just active, he was still going about his ministry. I don't know whether you understand. Alright, so, Brother said, Jesus did not even have time to be debating with him. Jesus had only one purpose for being there. It wasn't Satan that brought Jesus to that place. Jesus went there by himself. Hallelujah. Now, nobody could have even killed Jesus. Do you understand? He said, I have power to lay down myself, to lay down my life, and I have power to pick it up again. What Jesus did was he submitted himself to death. Not because they could kill him. It was because it was expedient. It was necessary for him to die at that time. That body had to die for our redemption. Alright. And Brother Bram said, immediately did that. He, he said, Jesus grabbed the keys from his side and gave him a death kick before he left that place. He said, Satan became stripped and exposed. His nakedness was exposed. He said, since that time, Satan had no power over any of God's children again. Before then, Satan had the key of death. Meaning that he can decide to kill anybody whenever he wants. But after that time, Satan does not even have the power to kill those in his domain at his will. Because why? The key of death has been what? Taken from him is now in Jesus' hand. That is why you can't die before your time. You don't believe that? I said, you can't die before your time. That's why the word told us. He said, if Satan comes to attempt you a thousand times, he will go empty-handed a thousand times. Alright, so back to this scripture. Now, wherever you find this, any child of God and the child of Satan, it reminds me of what happened some weeks ago. We were in the, I was in the office, in the place where we do business. And one of the Chinese guys, the GM specifically, came up and myself and brother were sitting there talking. And he came and met us and started talking. He started asking questions about, he started talking about religion. And he said he wanted to ask a question. He said, is God black or white? And I smiled. And I said, God is a spirit. I said, he's neither black, nor white, nor brown, or orange, or pink. He doesn't, doesn't, doesn't belong to any of those races. He doesn't belong to any of those colors. And we now brought it down to Jesus. He said, what about Jesus? I said, Jesus is not even a Jew. We told him, he said, Jesus is God Almighty that put on human flesh that he might do the work of redemption. And as we began to talk, it took us back to serpent seed. And I had to get up. There was a board there, and I liked that board. We began to draw it. And thank God that man got, he was listening to an interpreter, but he could get perfectly what we were talking about. He said, he himself doesn't believe in Darwinian theorem of evolution. I said, there are only two races of people on the earth. I said, forget the colors. You are Chinese, you look... I think they are yellow, are we? They are red. They are red. Okay. <laughs> I said, forget the white, the black, the red, and the brown. Forget it. I said, there are only two races. He said, what do you mean? Then we went back to Genesis. And we began to draw the lines. We talked about Cain and Abel. We talked about the original seed. Sorry, about the original sin. What actually happened in Eden? When we began to draw the family trees and the family lines, the guy came and said he wanted to be sure that he understood what I've said. He came and drew his own and it matched perfectly with what I've drawn. He said, this is interesting. He said, he would like, he said, we will continue again. I said, yes, I would like to continue again. What are we trying to say, brethren? There are only two races of people on the earth. Forget tribes. Forget nationalities. Only two races. Is either you belong to Adam's race or you belong to Cain's race. Are you following, friends? Now, whenever you find any of these two groups together, there must be an enmity between them. 
God is the one that said so. He said, I will put an enmity between thee and the serpent, and between thy seed and what? And his seed. And once you find the two of them, that's what Abraham said, elect cannot persecute an elect. Now, once you find the two of them, and that enmity comes to play, look at what God said next in that same verse. Let's look at verse 15. He said, and on, sorry, verse 15 said, And I will put an enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And he said, He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, the worst or the best that the seed of the serpent can do to the seed of the woman is to bruise the heel. You don't seem to get that. No matter the attempt, no matter how hard the seed of the serpent fights, the best it can achieve against the seed of the woman is to do what? To bruise the heel. But, the seed of the woman, we always do what? We always crush. Mind what I used. I didn't say bruise. I used crush. Because when the prophet was talking about, each time the prophet referred to this, he was talking about crushing the head, not bruising the head. And when you actually go and you look at the root word that was used, there, there were two different words in, um, what's it called? In Hebrew language. The, real, the Hebrew language for that bruise the head is actually crush the head. So our prophet was correct. Are you following? What the seed of the woman will always do eventually is to do what? To crush the head of the seed of the serpent. God said this in Genesis. It was God's planting. It was God's seed which can never fail. Are you following? Now, remember the last time we read a quote of the prophet where Abraham was saying that he said, every seed has a perpetual life. Let me give you an example. If you take a corn, now, the, the corn, corn that we, have been, we are planting, I mean the original corn that we are planting today, started way back in Genesis. No new corn seed has been manufactured apart from the hybrid one which cannot reproduce itself. Do you believe that? Nobody has created another corn seed. Nobody has created another mango seed. Nobody has created another orange seed. For the past 6,000 years, all the seeds we've been having are the ones that have been reproducing itself till now and they have never failed. As long as there is gem of life in it, if you take that seed and the environment is conducive enough for it and you plant it, if you plant it in Australia, plant it in Nigeria, plant it in Congo, it will always bring forth. And it will continue to bring forth from generation to generation. So also it is with the word of the Lord. Because it is a seed. Wherever it's planted, whenever it's planted, it will always bring forth fruit. We are going somewhere. Let's just take it gradually. Do you understand it to that level? We understand it to that level. Alright. Now, God came again to strengthen that promise when he met with Abraham. Are you following, friends? Now, when he met with Abraham, there's no need for us to go through to, to we know the story. By the time he got to Genesis 22, and he was talking to Abraham. He said, by myself have I sworn. He said, blessing I will bless thee. He said, multiplying I will multiply thy seed. He said, and your seed shall do what? Shall possess. This was seen in Genesis. The gate of his enemies. And when Abraham preached a sermon, possessing the gates of your enemies, after what? That is going to, who is going to be the child? Is the seed of the serpent. I will put an enmity between thee, amen, and the seed of the woman. Are we following, friends? When you begin to look at it, and let's look at some of the characteristics of seeds. Now, if, you know, even among the corn seeds, there are different, um, I wish um, Brother Amos is here. He studied, I think he studied agronomy, and I think he did one of his masters. That has to do, it has to do with seeds. 
crop something like that now listen seeds also have varieties for those who have been farmers before there are some variety of seed that they said they are not that they are resistant to a particular disease and there are some that are resi- that are susceptible to a particular disease now if you are living in an area where that disease is prevalent what you need to do is to go and get the seed that is resistant to that particular disease so that it can thrive and that disease will not be able to affect that particular what that particular corn do you understand and the truth is wherever that disease exists as long as you take a corn of seed that is resistant to that particular disease that corn will thrive because what is the nature of that seed are you getting it now so also the seed of God has some peculiar characteristics peculiar properties amen that wherever it finds itself it must be what it must thrive because that life to thrive is already within it let me read this let me read the quote before we continue to just back up what i've just said but abraham in um the spoken word is the original seed he said something now he was referring to jesus as the overcomer. We know that the seed of the woman is Jesus Christ, right? He said, I will give you a seed to the serpent. The serpent had already defiled her. He said, but I seed, he said, but I seed that I will give you shall bruise his head. He will take the thing back again. Amen. I wish everybody could see that. He said, I have come to conquer and correct what Eve did. And the only way I can do it is through a woman that believed the word. Sorry, that believed the seed. Now the seed here still referring to the word, still referring to what? To Christ. Okay, he said, where a woman didn't believe the seed, the woman believed the seed. Where one didn't believe the seed. Now what is the seed? The seed is the word of God. What, what was the response of Mary? When the angel came to me that, he said, be it unto me according to what? Which is a seed. Mary does not know how it's going to be. It has never been before. Amen. That a woman will get pregnant without meeting a man. But yet, she believed it anyhow. She did not doubt the word or reason the word like Eve did. She was able to take the seed of God's word into her heart. Amen. And it brought forth a son. All right. We've been able to establish that. Let's continue. Say, I am that overcomer. I'm the one that is come to give life. What did he call himself? Overcomer. This is referring to Christ. So if Christ is an overcomer, Christ being the seed of the woman is what? An overcomer. That means every seed that comes after him, they are also what? I am that overcomer. I'm sorry. I'm the one that is to give life that through my death, to pay the penalty of what she did, through my life will be given to you to flow over you, and you will be sons of God and daughters of God. See? As long as the seed is in there. Now, I'll jump to paragraph one for you. He said, all of God's sons must be the same. Yes, sir. To be born of the word and spirit brings us back to the spoken word again. Like in John 3, see, to be born of the water and the spirit, what does it do? Then it brings you right back again onto the place of where you should have been at the beginning. That's the reason of Christ's death bring us right back again to where sons of God. Alright. Now, we were saying that um, we're talking about the two seeds one will bruise the heel, the other will what? Crush the head. Alright. Now, when you look at the examples, now, this seed we are talking about, it doesn't have to be the enemy we are talking about. When we are talking about possessing the gates of your enemies, you know, gates in the Bible refers to different things. 
when you go and study the Old Testament, gates in some places is where judgment is carried, is passed. Right? Judgment is also executed at the gate. Do you understand? There's a difference between passing judgment and executing judgment. Lawyers, am I right? A judge is to pass judgment, but who executes the judgment? The bailiffs, right? Thank you. So, it is at the gate that both judgment and its execution is carried out. Are we following, friends? Now, the gate is also where transactions are done. There are several places in the Bible where you hear, um, what's it called? Okay, for example, in the book of um, Second Kings, yes, sir. I'm actually coming to that. In the book of Second Kings, is it Second Kings or First Kings? When Elisha prophesied, he said, by this time tomorrow, a measure of barley and a measure of wheat will be sold for so much at the gate of Samaria. Because why? Commerce also takes place at the gate. Now, the transaction of um, Kingsman Redeemer, stroke redemption, also happens at where? The gate. If a father has an unruly son, where does he report him to? At the gate. Elders also have meetings at where? The gate. When, where was Lot when the angels came to meet him? He was what? He had become an elder sitting at the gate. Now, a gate could be a protection for people that are within that gate, for a community. That's why when you have a property, you need to fence it and put a gate. It's in the Bible. I said it's in the Bible. Jesus said a man that has found, it's like a man that has what? Found a treasure, he go and buy, buys the land and does what? Put a fence and put a gate. So if you have land somewhere and it's just empty, go and put fence and go and put gate. Thank you, sir. It's scriptural. Because when it's not secured, anybody can trespass there. It has its own spiritual implication. Alright? This physical type is spiritual. That is why your mind also has its own gate. Your soul has a gate. In which you need to put a sentry there to watch over it. So that nothing can just come in and go out anyhow. You know, back in the days, you know there are some places then, when we went out, they are not well developed, we used to use a short court. You are going there, ah, there's a short court there. You, and that place is another man's land. The day the man will come and take his possession, he will just put fence, put gate. Say, ah, this man is wicked, though they defend this place. He's not wicked. He has taken possession. Are you following? So, different things happen at gates. Now, the moment a gate is conquered, that means there will be an unrestricted access to that community or that property. Are you following, friends? That is why if the enemy has conquered your gates, any of your gates, he will have an unrestricted access to that place. If he has conquered your soul, it is an unrestricted access. If he has conquered your health, it is an unrestricted access. If he has conquered your finances, it is an unrestricted access. Access. That is why you need to go and take back what? Possession. Drive the enemy. That's why in those days, we go and read the Bible in the Old Testament. You will see where the Bible used to buy the Bible talks about when the enemy comes, what do they bump? One of the things that they bump first is the gates. Because most of the gates back then were wooden gates. When it was it Ezra or Nehemiah? When they came to give report of what happened, said the gates they are burned down and the walls of the city. Why? Because why? When you have burned down the gate and the wall of the city, you have an unrestricted access. One more thing: it's at the gate you have the wall tower, mm. and the watchman is at the topmost top, watching over the whole place. Because before the enemy comes, he will have seen them afar off and won the people so that what? Number one, they must close the gate first. That is why when you go and read the book of... Um, when Israel was to approach Jericho, what did, they have, what, what did they do? They shut the gate. Are you following? But the Bible promised us something. He said, we shall possess the gate of our enemies. 
It does not matter the material that the gate is made up of. What did you say, sir? Thank you, sir. Whether the gates are short or opened, whether the gate is made of wood or bamboo poles or made of iron, you know it's difficult to breach an iron gate. But the Bible said, he has broken the gate of brass. <laughs> and caught the bars of iron asunder. This is what God, our overcomer, has done for us. Are you following, friends? See, what we are trying to show to you is you don't have any limitation whatsoever. The only limitation that is existing in your life right now are the ones that you permit. Let's, let's continue. Let's continue. I know I, we, have, we have a very short time, but I just wanted to get to something somewhere good before we close tonight and pray. And also want us to close early. All right. Let me just read one or two things from here that the prophet said. Now, all through the scriptures, you will always see these things play out. You have um, Isaac and Ishmael, right? You have Jacob and Esau, isn't it? You have Moses and Pharaoh. I think I've said it there one time that oftentimes the children of God starts out, in fact, all the time, the children of God starts out at a position of disadvantage. Did you get that? Okay. I think we've been talking about Abraham in, in, for in recent times. At least I was here last Sunday evening service. I need that Sunday evening service. Abraham started out, Abraham was rich, right? But the man still has a bot in his life. What was the issue? He had no child. Hello? He had no what? No child. And he has passed the child-bearing age himself and his wife. That is a disadvantage, isn't it? It was at that point of disadvantage that they received the word of the Lord, which is a seed. Are you following, friends? So even though they have started out at the position of disadvantage, what we always give them an advantage is what? The word of God. That is what Abraham said somewhere. He said, it depends on where the word of God is. It does not depend on your circumstance. It doesn't depend on your situation. It doesn't depend on what you go through. It depends on what God has said. Not just that alone. It also depends on your own attitude to what God has said. But every seed of Abraham has a peculiar characteristic. And it is that they always, their ground, they are fertile ground to receive the seed of God, which is the word of God. Now, listen to the scriptures. The Bible usually addresses seeds, not even descendants. When you look at Abraham, the problem was not unto, it didn't say, and your children or your descendants we what? We possess the gate of their enemies. That's not what the scripture says. Even though we could, trans, we could translate seed to also mean descendant. But what the Bible was referring to as seed. It didn't say seeds. Your seed. And it's not everybody that, ever, that came through the bowels of Abraham that are the seed of Abraham. Remember I said there are only two races of people. Forget it. Every other thing is um, is by the way. That seed of Abraham is peculiar to some people. They all have one thing in common and what is it? It is the faith of Abraham. The faith that believe whatsoever God has said regardless of their circumstance. And that faith, Abraham said, is called what? Revelation. And Abraham said, Revelation is a gift of God. A gift is not for everybody. Is for a what? A particular class of people. And those class have a special hearing ability. It's not given to everybody. 
Hey, that is why two people can come to the same church, hear the same sermon, under the same anointing, same preacher, same time, and they have two different attitudes to the world. Abraham told us the story of a man, of two friends, two friends that came to church. And when they were leaving, the other guy was sad and angry. And the friend asked him, Ah, oh boy, what is happening to you? He said, that man called me a buzzard. And the man did not call his name. <laughs> the preacher did not call his name. I said, you, you're a buzzard. He said, mm. he said, but he called me an eagle. They heard the same sermon. You know, that's why when you come to church and you are angry at the preacher or at the word, some people are rejoicing, you are angry. What is the problem? Check the seed that is inside of you. Thank you, sir. Special what? Special hearing ability. I've used an example here before. I said, if you are, if you go to a country like, um, which country should I mention now? That is not very popular. That you can you hardly find, maybe it will be difficult for you to find black people there. Let's say, Papua New Guinea. Who has heard about Papua New Guinea before? There's a country called Papua New Guinea. <laughs> you go there, probably you are the only black person among a thousand people on the, in a particular location. And you are walking. And you hear, Eka Aro, only one person will turn back and say, where is that from? Why? Because you are all the only one that has a special hearing ability to understand what has just been said. Because why? Even though you are far away from home, what will be your reaction? This sounds like home. That is why the first time you heard the gospel, maybe you went with your relatives, maybe you went with your friends, and the world was going forward, your mind became disturbed. After a while, clarity begins to come in. You begin to wonder, what am I hearing? It began to make meaning to you. Even though you have never heard such a thing before, when they come for people that want to give you the life to Christ, you stood up and you stepped out. Everybody began, ah, what is wrong with this guy? It was because you have heard what? From home. The rest will make jest of you. They said, he has become a fanatic. He said, don't mingle with those people. Those people are fanatics. But he said, I love them. Why? Because what? You have heard from it could make meaning to you because why? That is the language of home. <laughs> ah, because you have a special hearing ability to understand and oh God and decipher what the message is saying. The other will just be going without even turning back because he, he, that is gibberish as far as they are concerned. Remind me the story of that eagle and the eaglet. When the eagle screamed, the mama eagle screamed, the rest what they scampered for safety. The eagle stood. Said that makes a meaning. <laughs> and he said, Come, 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 come. Ah, he said, that, um, I could hear what that, that I could hear what that mother is saying. And the mother screamed at him and said, I'm coming for you. He said, Mama, is that you? I didn't know this was Mama. Because why? The same seed, the same nature was inside the both of them. Everybody heard that sound. The chickens heard the sound. If dogs were there, they heard the sound. Turkeys heard the sound. Goats and the dogs, everybody in the courtyard, they all heard the scream of the mama eagle. Only one person responded. Kindred seed. Like seed. Like we give birth to what? Like. Because why? They have the same nature, same life flows in them. And that is who the seed of Abraham are. Are you following, friends? And that is the reason why you could have a whole nation calling themselves Israel and they don't believe in the supernatural, they don't believe in miracles, and only one person will stand out. I said, if God be for us, we are then are his miracles. Only one person could stand out and say, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? To what? To defy the army of the living God. Because why? This guy is actually the seed of Abraham. Because why? The seed, the, what, the, the, the nature of Abraham was in him. To know that God is faithful. God will keep his word. Whatever God has said will come to pass regardless. They don't look at circumstance. They don't look at situation. They don't look at hopelessness. 
They don't look at themselves. The first point of deceit of the enemy most times in our lives is when we begin to consider ourselves. That's why the Bible says, they that compare themselves with themselves. You know that scripture can be applied in many ways. So they that compare themselves with themselves, they are not what? They are not wise. If David has stood there and said, ah, look at this guy. Man, this guy is tall. And David began to admire Goliath. Just like oftentimes we begin to admire problems. We look at our problem, we begin to admire it. We admire our circumstance. We begin to wait and say, ah, nobody is suffering like me. How do you know? You are comparing what Mr. A had gone through, comparing to what you have gone through, and you think yours is heavier. Do you know what they started doing? You have started appreciating your problem. You started magnifying it. Said these brethren, they don't even know what I'm going through. I'm the one that is suffering the most in this church, and nobody's even pitying me. <laughs> hey, you have become like the rest of the Israel. They said, This guy called Goliath, he has been a warrior from his youth. But what he did not recognize is, is what? Is the seed of the serpent again on the scene? And whenever the seed of the serpent comes on the scene, watch out for the seed of the woman. Hallelujah. He said, This guy is a warrior from his youth. This guy has conquered this country. He has conquered this country. He has conquered this country. The Bible said, and there came a champion out of God. He was their champion. And they looked around and they began to wonder, in our country, who is like this guy? Nobody. Saul, who is our king? We elected him king because why? We wanted a king that will look like the rest of other nations. So they got a Saul who was head and shoulder above every person. But Abraham said, there are so many men weighing 250 pounds. He said, but there is no ounce of men in them. So it's not by stature. It's not by looks. So, ah, that brother, he, I like the way he dresses. He looks handsome. He dresses well. You are admiring a nice dressed demon. That's why we tell you, sister, when you are getting, when you are looking to, that's why sometimes I look at sister and I, 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 I just pity some. You know, I talk with a lot of people. Somebody said one time, he said, and this person, I don't, I can't, I, I can't, he, I, he, he keep me, I can't marry him. I said, why can't you marry him? He said, it's not my type. What makes him not your type? Is he not a believer like yourself? That's the only type I'm interested in. He said, hey, he's a believer. I said, brother. He said, but I don't like his dress sense. It, look, it, does, it's not, it doesn't look tush. It looks loca. I'm not saying it's not good to look tush. It looks loca. <laughs> and I said, oh, is that her? said, that's her. Now, they had married another person that is always looking tush. Looking papas. That's what they call it, sir. <laughs> I don't know. I just used to hear it. Looking papas. That's another word they used to use. What other word do people used to use? Borrow me word now. They know. And the problem is, as the all that you are admiring, it can be knocked off under one minute. In fact, a second. I've seen people that are very handsome, when sickness struck them in less than a week, they were a shadow of themselves. All the handsomeness and all the beauty disappeared. That is why the only thing that you can put emphasis on when you are looking for a life partner is an intrinsic value, which is an eternal value, which is conversion, which is salvation, which is God. Aside that, no, that nothing else will face. You can have it today and tomorrow is gone. The person that you are looking at upon doesn't have a job, he doesn't look, he doesn't talk anyhow, he doesn't talk anyhow, he doesn't know how to talk, he's not composed, he's not this, he's not that. His face away. will. I've seen people that marry very nice and some young gentlemen, gentle guys walking. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. After a while, they start beating them. You begin to wonder, say, ah, is this not the man I married? This guy was a gentle guy. But you don't know that inside that tushness, Brabram Bra called it a serpent. That serpent was there. He said, that serpent has been there all along. 
It does not just have a, a room to express itself. That is why we don't choose by sight. Hey, we don't walk by sight. We don't decide by sight. We decide by faith. Faith in what? Faith in God. Faith in His word. Knowing that tomorrow will be better. So Israel judged by sight. <laughs> they were not after a man after God's own heart. They look for a soul, head and shoulder, above the rest. If you are looking for a tushman, one day you are going to see a man that is more tushar than your husband. And if you are looking for a tush sister, tush babe, you are going to see another, another babe that is more beautiful than your wife and you start committing adultery. That is how it works. Yeah, but you, oh, thank you. You can totally tush them up to your taste. That's it. Make all the apostle. And some of you will just sit and say, what did that brother even find in that sister to go and marry that girl? That girl that's, that's Raz. Who are you to judge? Who, I say, who are you? Say, what did that sister even find in that brother? That brother that's that, that, that very local brother. Me, I can't marry that kind of a person. You, know? you need help. What did Christ find in me? I didn't say you. In me. To leave everything in heaven and condescend. That's what I like to say. What condescension? Bringing us what? Redemption. Left all his glories and come to endure the insult of men just to redeem me. What did he find in me? Is it because I can't even mention it. So what did he find in you? So don't judge what somebody else has found in another person. People find love in unlikely places. <laughs> oh, glory to God. You love the Lord tonight? So we don't judge by sight. We judge by what? We judge by faith. So one day, Israel saw a man. This guy was not just head and shoulder above everybody. He's a giant. He was an unusual man. How many fingers do you have in your hands? Goliath had six. Six toes. On each leg. Six fingers. On each hand. When you are actually, even if you are not, if you not heard about his exploit, the moment you realize that somebody has six fingers, you say, you will admire that person first, even if you don't run. Everything about this man is what? Is extraordinary. Even Saul feared. But had they remembered what God said in Genesis, it would have changed the whole picture for them. That is why it depends on what you are meditating on. That's why the Bible said, Thy word have I eat in my heart that I may not what? Most times we think that I, said I, I won't lie, I won't commit adultery. I won't, that's not the sin. What is sin? Brother said, Sin is unbelief. Unbelief in the word of God. When you hear the word of God in your heart, when the meditation of the word of God is continually your daily bread, let me tell you something. Unbelief will disappear. Faith will stay. Then came a man whose God is the Lord. Bram said David was a man that knew it was annoying that God had blessed him. And that what? God is with him. David was conscious of God's presence. You need to be conscious of God's presence. You need to know where God is at the moment. That is why when you are a believer of this message, you are blessed. If you are really a believer. Because why? You know where God is. Where is God now? I said, where is God now? Uh, you need to know where our God is. So David knew that what? God was with him. And God had proven it to him over and over again. That is what? That is with him. That is why when we have troubles. We were in last Wednesday. Each time we have troubles and difficulties and trials. 
God wants to prove to you over and over again that is with you. Problems, really, some, most times, they are not to break you or to crush you or to destroy you. It is to create an awareness of the presence of God in your life. Are you following, friends? Because why? You know, oftentimes we feel that because you love somebody. Reverend said, um, love is not human sympathy. Is, compassion is what? Is it compassion or love? Compassion is not human sympathy, but doing what? The will of God. You say, ah, Reverend said, you say, oh, I love my son. And he's playing on the express with sand, putting sand on his head, on the express. Oh, Johnny, God bless you there. Some of us parents, we do it, especially mothers. Nobody, your son, what he's doing is an equivalent of being on the express and playing. You are not able to do it yourself. Somebody, a neighbor, a caring neighbor, comes to help you do it. You now hate the person. Something is wrong with you. Say, I want to fight for my child. Say, maybe it's because there is life in you that you are fighting for a child. Amen. But Abraham said, if you truly love that child, what are you going to do? You will jack that child out of the express. Give him a spam. Wah! So that next time he knows not to go back there. Not taking a You rub his head. He said, good boy. One day you will, you will go back there and you won't be there. Are you following, friends? So God not pampering us, God not probably giving us what we think and all the concept of life doesn't mean that God hates us. So God sending trials across our path once in a while or so many times is a proof that God is actually with you. Because David was a small boy. God sent him a lion. <laughs> God sent him a lion after he had made him to come to that revelation and that realization that is with him. And after he sent him a lion, David, because he had been meditating on the word of God, what did he do? Faith had already built up in him. The Bible said, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing what? And unbelief also do what? <laughs> same, same thing. So it depends on what you pay attention to. So David went after the lion. Went after the bear. For each one, he gives, he gives him more confidence and faith in God. To trust God. Till what? Till Goliath came. And when Goliath came, what did he say? He said, the same God that delivered the bear into my hands and delivered the lion into my hands, that same God will do what? Will give me this on the Philistine. He stood there, he said, today, he said, I will take your head off your body. He had already passed judgment on Goliath. Listen, your duty as a believer is to pass judgment. When you go and read the book of Genesis, I think 18, we see that it's a Sunday, where he said, he said, for I know Abraham will, what, will teach his children. Can you bring up that scripture, please? Maybe one day we are going to do a series on that, on that, on that, on that subject, justice and judgment. He said he will teach, one of the things Abraham was going to teach his children is what? To do justice and what? Judgment. So you are to do justice and judgment. Doing judgment is what? Wherever you find yourself, you pass a judgment based on the mind of God. When you go to the book of Psalms, he said, The Lord executed judgment <laughs> upon unto those that are what? Unto those that are what? Unto those that are oppressed. It's in the Bible now. So you do judgment, God executed what? Is God that you do, God executes. You are the judge. Brother Ampli, the Simon Tire. He said, You are the jury. Isn't it? So, what does the jury do? The jury has to, their, their duty is to stand up and say, Guilty or not guilty. Now, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. <laughs> After what? So that means he's leading by example. You know, the preacher was saying on Sunday, at least in the evening when I was around, 
He said, Abraham was the one that brought upon himself, giving birth at 100. Ah, you said it, sir. When he was talking, he said, Shall a man, how did he say it again? Shall a man at 100 have a child? Isn't it? What was he doing? He was actually passing judgment. Listen. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. What is the way of the Lord? To do justice. And what? Somewhere the Bible said, to do righteousness and judgment. And when you go to the book of Psalms, he said the Lord executed the righteousness and judgment to those who are what? He still brings us back to that scripture that says, is the high priest of our what? Of our confession. It is what you confess. That is what he will do. If you don't pass judgment, that is not to execute. <laughs> mm -hmm. What did I say? You know, the law is very funny. You know, there are many times in which people go to court and say, ah, the lawyer is, uh, sorry, the judge is corrupt. They bribe the lawyer. Sometimes it's because people don't actually present their cases well. Even if after they presented their cases well, if you don't go and get, execute the judgment that has been given. They said when you are going to get judge, when you are, when you are going to execute judgment, no, no matter how nice you are, you must forget your niceness. If possible, sit down in one, if you, if you, you are too cool, sit down in one corner and let the bailiff go and do their job. Because when they start begging, the man that is occupying the land and his children start begging, oh, please help us, this, that, and you stop them from executing that judgment, you might lose that land. If the court has awarded you judgment about a land or a property, say, first of all, let them execute the judgment and drive them out of the land. Is that, isn't it? At least we have two lawyers now. She? They say, ah, it is raining. Where are they going to sleep? Drive them out first. Because if you don't drive them out, forget it, you might lose that land. You can't go back to court because the court has passed judgment once. Because you prevented them from executing the judgment, you might lose it forever. You can bring it to the spiritual. But Abraham the trial says, he said, you are the jury. If you say God is guilty, God is guilty. If you say God is faithful, then what? God is faithful. God will execute the judgment that you have passed. But you are the one that is going to decide. <laughs> hey. But I choose to say that God is faithful. I will, I, I've judged him faithful. Not that I will. I have judged him faithful. Regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the situation, I have what? I have judged him faithful. The gifts of the enemy in your own life, it might not be, the enemy might not be physical. The seed of the serpent that is waging war against you might not be a human being. It could be sickness. It could be worry. Some people can worry. They can worry for everything. Worry about everybody. They are always say what I what is wrong? Say I'm just worried. Worried about what? They are worried for their, they are worried for everybody. It's an evil spirit. You have climbed the bridge so many times before getting there. They've died so many times without dying. It is a gate of the enemy. I'm going to show you a scripture before we close. Don't worry, we'll soon close. Remember we've said it, that all the seed of Abraham, they have the same characteristics because the seed is the same in all of them. That is why when Joshua appeared and he was chasing after the enemy, the obstacle he had was what? Night and darkness. But because God had already given his word, which is still at work because every seed has a perpetual life. Isn't it? All he, could, all he had to do was what? Execute judgment. Sorry, pass judgment. And what was his judgment? He said, son, stand still there. Moon, you stand still there. Until I have what? Until I have finished this battle with this people. And the Bible said, 
it was so. He said, never had it been that God had listened to a man that the sun and the moon could stop at the places where they were. Because why? The seed of God was in action. Same thing played out between Moses and who? And Pharaoh. Probably, and probably right now as you are seated, same thing is playing out in your life. But it doesn't matter what is playing out in your life. That's what we are saying. In Genesis, a, a seed has been sown already for your victory. And that seed is still alive. It's still active. No matter what the opposition is, or who the opposition is, either at work, at home, in your neighborhood, in your marriage, in your career, in your business, in the life of your children, it makes no difference. God's word remains the same. You know, sometimes Satan used to we used to feel that like Satan is having an upper hand in our lives. So now you get to a point you, begin, you are confused. You begin to wonder, ah, why is my life like this? I've had people sit down and say, I don't even understand my life again. I don't understand again. It's as if the old world has left me behind. They begin to look at their friends. People that they started out together. Say, but I, I would have lived, I've heard some people say, I would have worked for the Lord. I've done this for the Lord. I've done, I've... Thank God you said, you did this for who? <laughs> hey. And the Lord is a diligent and just rewarder. But I want to say, he will hold no man nothing. S stand still. Just stand still. Just stand there. He will come to your head. Now listen. God made us to understand something. You know, somewhere, um, Brabham gave a story of um, Martin. It just coming to my mind now. Sometimes you go through things, it's as if you're about to be crushed. Now, it's not the serpent being crushed now. It's as if you are being what? Crushed. Let me tell you something. It might look as if you are being crushed. But you can't be crushed. You know, I've used an example here before. It's like when you are watching a movie. And, you know, when I was in is it primary school, I didn't grow up with television. So we don't know. When people are talking in class, I'm like, what are these people talking about? They said, I say, boss. Is it boss? They call it a boss. Boss. <laughs> and that is the actor. They say, they say, um, actor doesn't die. Boss will die. I said, what is boss? What is actor? Let me tell you something. In this movie of life, you are the actor. <laughs> Satan is the bad guy. Hey, sometimes when you are watching, you say, ah, this guy. Imagine when they throw somebody in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and there are plenty of sharks all over the place. And he's the actor. And they say, oh, he's dead. And they carry their ship and they go away. One year, two years, they didn't hear from him. And one day they began to see some testing signs. They say, ah, the only person that behaves like this is this guy. They say, but he's dead now. So how do you know he's dead? We threw him right in the middle of the sea. He's not dead. What did I say? If you have not seen the movie before, you have said we agree that he's dead. But if you are the writer of the script, or you have read the script before, what are you going to do? You just smile. He said, just calm down. Keep watching. Because why? Maybe by the time you get to another part, another part or another chapter, you will see the guy again. Maybe the last time you saw him, he was 12 years old. Now he's coming up as 20 years old. Because why? He's the actor. He can't die. Let me tell you something. In the, Abraham said, the world, he said, this world, he said, he said, the stage is set for the great drama. He said, and all the actors are there. Acting down their own part. The beast is there. Acting out his own part. So also the children of God are here. Acting out their own part. God is also here. Acting out his part. And let me tell you something. You are the actor. You can't be defeated. Yeah. But Abraham talked about Martin. <laughs> they said Martin after. You know he was a military man. Martin the star messenger. He came one day and he said. He, said he began to have a militant attitude towards the doctrine of of idolatry. He began to fight them everywhere. Fight them everywhere. 
until one day he called them to a challenge like Elijah did on Mount Camel. And they were to tie him to a tree that he would die. He was the one that even told them, he said, tie me to a tree. And call the tree, put me at the position whereby when the tree falls, it will crush him down. And they said, they said, Brabram said, those people, in their wilds, they said, we are not going to try to a tree that is just standing. We will try to a tree that is on top of a hill, that is bending. That by force of gravity, automatically, it will just go down like that and the tree will kill him. Martin was not afraid. They tied him and what did they do? They began to cut the tree. As they cut the tree, the Bible said, the tree, God turned the tree over. Martin was on top and the tree itself killed a lot of the fleeing idolaters. Because why? This is just like God that we serve. Let me tell you something. You must understand God. We've come to a level in which by now we should know the ways of God. You should just sit still and say, I know how this matter will end. See, you are not in fear. You, are not, you just smile and say, I know how this matter will end. I think that a lot of people here have told before. I said, don't worry, calm down. We've seen this before. We've seen your type before. We've seen your pattern before. We know how this matter will end. Did he end like that or not? A sister gave me a request sometime, I think December last year. She said, bro, he said, hey, my, what's it called? Is it residency or is it visa that is due? She said, it will be due early next year. But she was afraid that it might not be granted this time. I said, calm down. We'll pray when I'm with you. They will give you. Early this, I said, yeah, I've applied though. I'm waiting for approval. I said, calm down. Approval will come. Yesterday, she just sent me a line. He said, bro, Joe, I got my what's it called today. <laughs> I just smiled. I said, that is very like my God. Is what? Just like our God. Because we know what he does. We know how he, because we know him as his word. Because that is his nature. No matter how dark it is, we know that it's going to be light again because God is with us. God is for us. God is in us. And he's working on our behalf. We are going to close now. But before we close, I will show you a scripture. Let's open the book of Esther. Chapter... chapter, let me check it again chapter 6 verse 13 yes, this is the truth see, let me tell you something Brother Ram said there is nothing that is out of Keta do you believe that? nothing is what? everything is running perfectly according to God's program you might look perplexed right now but forget it, that perplexity will soon be over. Amen. It will soon be over. Amen. A new season is coming. Amen. In fact, a new season is here. Amen. You will stand and testify Amen. that God is faithful. Amen. Listen. Every seed has its own characteristic. Corn. Abraham said everything that a seed is going to be, sorry, everything that the plant is going to be, all the, all the fruit is going to be is already in that seed. From a million or a t- t- thousands of years ago till now, they are still the same. Now, just like the seed of Abraham, see the same. Everything is just the same. So when you can actually understand, see, brother, that's what Abraham said. Go and look for your pattern in the Bible. No, this is a pattern. It says shadow. He said, locate your shadow where in the scriptures. The moment you are able to locate your shadow, and that was what worked for Auntie Jemima. Nobody told her this is when you look at it. Nobody told her that I was an Elijah on the land. All she just did by faith was what? Locate her shadow. And by faith, she said, since I've seen my shadow, this is not completed. Where is Elijah? And that turned to a prayer point for her. He said, oh God, where is what? There is a son that is sick, that is sick there, that is dying. And this is the Shunammai woman. I'm also a widow woman. I'm like that Shunammai woman. He said, Lord, send your what? And that prayer held the plane. See, God is a miracle working God. Though. There is nothing this God cannot do. If you know what it means, 
for a plane to have a um, we call it what do we call it again? It's not that's not a over. Emergency landing. When they, when they start declining, midday, midday. <laughs> hey. The airline will have lost a lot of money. I think they put them in an hotel, Abby. They put them in an hotel. In that place. But Abraham said he was in the hotel, right? That will have caused the airline a lot of money. But God does not care. What he caused the seed of the serpent. It's not his business. <laughs> he said, rather than his word to go unfulfilled, because that woman has been able to locate a, a, a word for her, a seed for her, rather than that word to go unfulfilled, Abraham said, God will rather bankrupt heaven and earth. If he has to bankrupt British Airways, American Airlines, CBN, Afro First Bank, God, it's not God's business. This word must come to pass. Because a woman has already taken that seed into her heart, it must happen. Thank you, sir. Listen. Let's read the scripture together. Everybody, let's read. And Ammon told Zeresh, you know this guy has gone through a lot. This guy is the seed of the serpent. Ammon, the other guy. Ah, something just came to my mind now. God said, I will be an enemy to Amalek forever. Ha! Hey! Just as he called Abraham his friend, he said, Amalek, I will be an enemy to them for. May we not be on the wrong side of prophecy. See, when you're on the right side of prophecy, everything is calm. Oh, it reminds me of what Jesus told Peter. He said, Peter, <laughs> Peter, the enemy has desire to have you and to sift you like a wheat. It means that Satan has a desire. But no matter how strong his desires are, no matter how passionate his desires are, no matter how emotional, and how is see, they say when you walk consistently towards your focus, towards your goal, you achieve it. It's not like Satan. You know why? Because prophecy is already against him. No matter how hard Satan works against you, his desires can never see the light of day. He said, Peter, the enemy has desire to have you. Just like he's dying to have several of us tonight. Through your health, through your finances, through your children, through your bad habits. And sit you like a wheat. What was the conclusion? I have prayed for you. <laughs> hey, I tell you tonight, Jesus has prayed for you. Let him keep trying. He has prayed for us. Hey. Listen. And Ammon told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. This guy, the enmity that God said he's going to put between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, he has put it between them. He started it too. And he said, he must kill all of them. The plan was already in motion. These people were crying already. They were mourning because they have believed the reports that they've heard. It was as if the enemy was what? Was winning. Are you here tonight as if the enemy is winning your life? Raise your hand. Thank you, my sister. It only seems as if it's winning. It's a seeming. <laughs> hey. He can't win. I say to you tonight in the name of the Lord, he can't win. It seems as if he's winning. Always remind yourself, I'm the actor in this movie. <laughs> I'm not the one that wrote the script. The one who wrote the script made me the actor in this movie. In the end, he said, last, last. I'm an overcomer. <laughs> and I'm, so this guy has tried, he has done everything. He has just been humiliated. <laughs> hey, I like God though. Sometimes God will just sit and just be watching. Say this guy. You know God does not need to bother himself. He's one that already gone for to take care of business. God had already removed Vasti the queen for a purpose. That Esther might come in. See, God had already gone ahead of Satan. Tete, he's coming late. He's only doing catch up. 
as usual. It can never be ahead. God has gone ahead far, far in your matter. God has gone ahead. I don't want us to go back to that part of the story where he came to the palace and said, What shall the king do to the man whom the king, that whom the king delights to honor? The guy entered just in time. Who brought him just in time? They said, Who? You know, they said the king could not sleep that night. Say, and that night the king could not sleep. They must have played all the instruments of this world. The king could not sleep. Told all the stories and all the jokes and all the comedians must have played throughout the night. He couldn't sleep. Gave him all the best wine in the world. He said, Wine can make people sleep. Maybe they have given him all the injection of the world to make him sleep. He couldn't sleep. There is no peace for the wicked. But when God decided to withdraw sleep, nobody can give that person sleep. All the billion five of this world cannot give that guy sleep. He can only sleep until he has done something. After he was like, Oh, yeah, bring the book of the record. How, how would the book of the record get somebody to sleep? He started reading. They began to read until they came to the story of Mordecai. Thank God Mordecai was not rewarded then. There are many good things you've done in time past that you are not rewarded and you are complaining. You are more money. Stop complaining. Is God that allowed it to be like that? And after they finished reading what the exploit of Mordecai said, as that guy, what was done unto him? They said, ah, nothing, no. Because if something was done, it would be written there. Said, nothing, no. Nothing care. And they heard the footsteps at the court. Who is there? He said, ah, is that man the Agagat? He said, ah, that's very good. Ah, man! Yeah, come here. What shall be done unto that man whom the king delights to honor? And God was there. <laughs> said, I am kind to him. He said, who else would the king delight to honor? He has to be me. Let the king's royal horse the king's royal sandal, the king's royal crown, the king's royal robe, everything that is the king, except the king's wife. He wanted everything. That guy is Satan personified. Inordinate ambition. And let the king most loyal man, royal, let him go before the king to announce, let, this is what will be done unto whom the king delights to honor. And, God, and the king said, Exactly as you have said. Who else is the king Muslim man here now? As you have said, let nothing fall to the ground. Go and do it unto what? Unto who? This was a guy that they prepared a gallows for. That he was to come and ask permission to hang him in the morning. You want to hang him when the day breaks. You don't know it's the rising of the sun. It can't happen. When the sun begins to rise, prisoners are set free. Sicknesses are healed. People are delivered. Death is restored to life. It's not time for death. It's time to live. And that is what brought us here. So he has... He, he was not a small worker. You know he was, he was a big man. He's not used to walking on the road. He walks in chariots. That is covered. So now this guy is walking on the road in the hot sun, going, for the, going around the city. So he started early in the morning till evening because there was no space in between. He just came in, had a shower, and returned back to dinner. So all afternoon, sun started on him and ended on him. That guy suffered. There will not be peace for the wicked. Listen, and Amman told Zeresh his wife and all his friends Everything that had befallen him, then sent his wife's men and Zeresh his wife unto him. If Mordecai be what? Be what? Be what? Say it again. So there is something peculiar about the seed of the Jew. You can persecute them, you can beat them, you can kick them. The worst you do is to what? Bruise their heel. Eventually. They will crush your head. If it be of the seed of the Jew, we are going back to Genesis 3. We are God laid that seed. Can you see that that seed is at work here? If it be of the seed of the Jew, before whom thou hast what? Before he was standing. It was as if he was having the upper hand. He has passed a decree. Decree of the meetings and the patients that cannot be changed. 
But they all testified again that you have started falling, no? If it be of the seed of the Jew, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not what? But thou shalt surely I say to you tonight, in the name of the Lord, every gate of the enemy, waiting what against you tonight, you, they can't prevail against you. They shall surely fall before you. You will possess all the gates of your enemies. Be it spiritual gates, physical gates, financial gates, material gates, gates in the life of your children. I don't care what those gates are. You might look disadvantaged, but I tell you, like Martin conquered the opposition in his time, you will conquer every opposition. God bless you. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Oh, down where for clean sin from sin I cried. Oh, there to my heart was the blood. Ah, so I say, glory. the name of God glory to his name hallelujah glory to his name oh yes that to my heart was the blood
connected to these blessings. We are connected to these victories. We are connected to these promises of Abraham only by its royal seed. Thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. I will put enmity between thy seed and her seed. That seed of the woman is what manifested as the Lord Jesus Christ. That seed of Abraham that the Bible pointed to us affirmatively that is not talking of seeds as of many but one that seed is the Lord Jesus Christ and in him we have access to all the blessings of Abraham that seed bruised the head, crushed the head of the devil on the cross of Calvary. Our prophet said, the best way to kill a vicious animal is not to shoot his leg, is not to try to rip his tummy. If you don't destroy the intestines, I tell you he can recover. But the best way to attack a vicious animal is to blow up his head. When you eat his head hard, it paralyzes the entire body. And that was what our Lord did on the cross of Calvary. That Genesis 3 promise was fulfilled because before then, nobody had the power of death over death. Saints died and Satan takes over their bodies. For that young Calvary, the lamb proved worthy. He crushed the head of the devil. He destroyed the power of death. For this cause was it manifested to destroy the work of the devil. He destroyed the work of the devil. And they took the keys from him. But guess what? All the power that he got, all the victory that he won, he gave it to the bride of his own choosing. This is why tonight you can and you have possessed the gates of the enemies. This is why tonight you can sing Victory is Mine. How many agree with me on that? How many agree with the preacher tonight? Do you see the secret? While all the seeds of Abraham possess the gates of the enemy. Do you see why the assault of Ammon amounted to nothing? Prophecy was already against him. When the Lord said, I see shall possess the gates of the enemy, it means whoever put up himself as an enemy to any seed of Abraham, his gates must be taken. And gates are taken also tonight. This is why the Bible said, And the gates of hell shall not what? Prevail. If Abraham be of the seed of the Jews, if Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom you have begun to fall, you will not prevail. Because prophecy was already against Ammon. 
And I want you tonight to know tonight that prophecy is already against every gate, any principality, any power. Our Lord already made an open show of them. He mocked them in the open. It's against every demon, every besetting sin. Prophecy is against any unrighteousness. Tonight you can walk free. That is why even Jericho wall, as fortified as it was, he couldn't stand before the people of God. How many witnesses can we count tonight? Shouldn't this raise our faith? Shouldn't this give us confidence for the moment? Were these not our shadows? Just thank the Lord for victory tonight. Open your mouth and confess your victory and thank the Lord for the same. I don't know what the need is in your heart tonight. But do a thanksgiving. Make it a thanksgiving moment. The preacher did not show you what God will do. He has he showed you, he's showing you what God has already done. He wanted you to see it so bad. That is why he brought those examples. Can you rejoice over all your all your calamities, all your circumstances tonight? Because the realization of them, the realization of what God has done has defeated them for you tonight. You are going home delivered. You are going home free. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Victory is yours tonight. It's a be of good cheer. I have overcome. Everything he did for you, he has already done. Friends, why don't we accept it tonight? Let's accept our healings. Let's accept our redemption. Let's accept our salvation. Let's accept our deliverance. Let's accept our victory. Let's accept our provision. All things are yours. Just accept them. Receive them. Be thankful to God for them. And go home in that mind. You cannot be defeated. It is not a blushing. The program is designed for you not to be defeated. It is clear. Friends, Mordecai didn't even know what was happening. So he, 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 he didn't pray. Did you realize that? No prayer. is what you know that is coming that you pray about. Mordecai was not aware. So he has already prayed through. Think about that a minute. Didn't Jesus Christ said he has prayed for us? Didn't he say that this world is a world of snares? That's what the prophet said. He said, but we've got an advocate. The spirit that interceded for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Think about that a minute, church. Why should I be discouraged? Why should the shadows fall? Why should my countenance drop? If Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is, is he. He watches over the sparrow. Tonight is watching over you. He watches over all his promises, all his words to bring them to pass. Oh, sing because you should be happy tonight. Testify. 
Give him glory. Give him praises. Give him honor. He won't fail you. victory of our hearts seeing what you have done for us you loved us before we even realized it it was your love that even brought us to that realization because it was by love that you called us from among the crowd that is on the surface of the earth you appointed us as yours and Lord you place your love in our hearts you place your thirst and your hunger, the seed of election that cried for life. And tonight here we are. That was the seed of victory in us. And we know inside that seed lay every blessing that we could ever wish for. And as it grows, it brings out its fruit. It expresses itself. And this is why we know we cannot be defeated. Because in that expression is healing. In that expression is victory. In that expression is provision. In that expression is deliverance. In that expression is salvation. And tonight we have all things. In that expression is worship. And we cannot truly really worship without being delivered. Just as that angel, just as you spoke on that inspiration, O Lord, through Zechariah, that we've been delivered may worship God all the days of our life. So our ability to worship is a sign that we are delivered. Make that a realization to your sons. Make them a realization to your daughters that we shall rise and take our position. And we shall not live under privileged lives. We shall not live under the tomb of the enemy. Oh, give us that victory. Give us that awakening, Lord. Wake up this church. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless your children. We are going to go in the power of your word and begin to claim those things that are not as if they are. And we know your angels will go home with us to attend upon that confession that we might be back to testify and feel the power of him who declared everything is finished in our mortal reigns, in our situation. 
grant it to us. Beyond the ability of your servant to express your word tonight, may the after speaker, the Holy Ghost, place it upon every heart, even as a revelation. Grant it to us, Father. If there be any request in the hearts of the saints tonight, may you grant it to them. We thank you for the week. We pray for the rest of the same. That Lord, you will undertake for us. Grant journey message to your people. Brother Boka who traveled with a partner, may you be with them. Lord, Sister Bright, that will be traveling tomorrow, may you be with her. Myself to Potakot and Abba, may you be with me. The rest of your people in their journeys this weekend, may you be with them. Oh God, in naming gathering, the gathering, the naming ceremony on Friday, may you take care of it. Be with the saints in all endeavors. Undertake for all your children. Bless them, Lord. Settle them. Establish them. Make them happy. Those who are in the valley of decision, may you grant to them your leadership. Those who are at the crossroad, may you show them your way. Lead them, Heavenly Father. Guide them. Lead them. Keep them as the apple of your eye. Take glory, dear Father. Whatever affliction is in the body of your people tonight, we know it's gone. Because we realize we possess those things. They are gates before they came. Your promise was ahead. The solution existed before the problem came. Lord, you know there will be those enemies. And you have given us your word, your promise in advance. We hold on to the word, Lord. Our anchor holds tonight upon those promises. And by it we ride rough short over every power of darkness. Thank you, Father. As we go, may you go home with us. Dismiss us with your blessings. Bless the rest of the night. Give to us a better tomorrow. Even good rest to our mortal beings. May you grant it, Father. Till we gather again, may you keep us in fellowship with thee and with one another. On Sunday, bring us back in our good numbers. We thank you for journey messages to those who travel in. Pray for those who are traveling now that you will take care. Brother Shewa and his wife, Sister Confidence, may you take care of their journey. As they make way back to their home, to their station in the U.S., may you make a way for them. Be with all your people, wherever they are on the surface of the earth. Our loved ones, may you take care. May we hear good from them. May they hear good from us. Thank you, Father.